We'll call the meeting to order. May we have roll call, please? A few months ago, I think we were remiss and forgot to do it. So we need to do that tonight. Um, do we have um, nominations for chair? I nominate you. Okay. Second. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now we need to elect vice chair. Do we have a nomination for vice chair? Got to have a nomination, so. All right, nominate Mr. Pollock. Mr. Pollock. Any other nominations? Seeing none, we'll close nominations. All those in favor of Mr. Pollock as vice chair say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Powell. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is public comment. And this is the time for the public to speak to us about any item not on tonight's agenda. Um, if there's anyone here who wishes to um, speak on any other item, you may come to the podium at this time. If you're here for the um, comp plan amendment or the zoning amendment, there will be public hearings on those later. Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Um, the next item is public hearing on Ordinance 1584, amendments to the LDC. I understand that there um, was a problem with the notice requirement, and so we're going to have to continue that one um, to a later meeting. Do I have a motion to continue? I'll make a motion to continue. Mr. Second. Lopez, Mr. Pollack, thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll take the vote. All those in favor of the motion to continue, say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries. Okay, the next item is ordinance number 1587, the comp plan amendment. Um, before we hear from the applicant on this one, um, I received a phone call from the applicant's attorney, and um, I understand that some of the other board members may have as well. I have as well. S since this is a quasi-judicial matter before the board, um, we need to um, state on the record if we've spoken to um, anyone outside of the meeting about this item and whether or not you can base your decision on just what you hear tonight as opposed to those prior conversations. Has anyone? Um, I have not. Okay. Yes, not. Okay, thank you. Okay, maybe we hear from the applicant on the comp plan amendment. Good evening. Um, Ellen Avery Smith, Rogers Towers, 201 South Orange Avenue in Orlando. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Uh, I think you all have in your, well, let me start off by taking a moment um, and introducing our team to you. Uh, the property that we're talking about tonight is under contract to be purchased by an entity that's called Taylor Morris, and you've probably heard of their homes that are being constructed all over this region. And with me tonight are Chris Tyree and Justin Campbell from Taylor Morrison. And then also on our team are Charlie Madden and Chad Morehouse, who are with um, Madden Morehouse Engineering, and they are civil engineers of record. So you'll probably see their names throughout the applications, and you'll know who they are. Um, before I start, I want to take a personal moment to thank the staff very much for the excellent staff reports and for meeting with us a number of times to make sure that we got all the I's dotted and T's crossed. Um, as you know, both of these um, applications are convoluted, and um, the comprehensive plan amendment application itself has to be transmitted to what's called the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. So there was a lot of detail and a lot of legwork that went into this, and we'll talk about that. And these ladies have done an excellent job of writing these staff reports, and they recommend approval of both the comprehensive plan amendment and the rezoning applications. And then we went to DRC last month. Month the, or earlier this month, correction, and uh, they also recommended unanimous approval. Before I get started, I want to, or talking about the detail, I want to give you some maps that I'm going to reference. Thank you. 
Kirche. Okay, I know we're talking about the comprehensive plan amendment um, application first, but I want to give you a little bit of an overview of the property we're talking about um, before we get into the nitty-gritty of the law. You're going to see in the package that I gave to you in the second map, it says location map. This is also in the staff report. You're going to see the location of the property that we're talking about. It's about 38 acres of land, and it's located just east of Lake Charm along Panther, and um, also on the north side of Artesia Avenue. And so you'll see that on this location map. You'll see also the surrounding development um, to the west and south in all the lotted plans. The property is currently located un in unincorporated Seminole County, which is the reason that we've asked for the property to be annexed into the city. And it, once the city annexes it, the law requires that it have a future land use designation, which is set forth in the comprehensive plan. And it also is required to have a zoning. So that sets forth the uses that can be made of the property once it's incorporated into the city. Um, the reason for the annexation is simple. Um, Seminole County, while providing great services, does not have water and sewer service available in this area. So in order to, de to develop this property to the, even the land use and the zoning that exists in Seminole County today, that cannot be accomplished because this, the county does not have water and sewer lines in this area. Only the city does. And in order to get those city water and sewer services, the city requires that we annex this property into the city to provide those services. And so certainly, you know, our client very much wants to you know, have water and sewer available um, for this project. You'll also see in the first map that I showed you and that I gave to you, copies for everybody in the audience, but I will show it. You'll see the property, it's outlined in red. And you're going to see a green area in the top, in the north, the northwest corner. That's the developable area of the property is here. This kind of blue shaded area here and along the south property line, all of this is wetland that is going to be preserved. So on this, all along the south property line and all in the northeast corner right here of the property, this will be set aside for wetland preservation. And we're going to talk about that again in a minute when we talk about the comprehensive plan amendment. So that's the, and when we're talking about the comprehensive plan amendment, I'll do, and I don't know, Ms. Madam Chairman, do you want me to talk about the comprehensive plan amendment and the zoning at the same time, or do you want to cover the comp plan amendment and have the hearing and then talk about the zoning next? Um. I think I'm going to defer that to Deborah. What do you think is best on this one? You can do both at the same time. Okay, we'll do that. Okay. It makes, more cons it, makes it more of a consistent story, if we can do all. In your package, again, you're going to, you, all these maps um, are in your package in some form or fashion. And so the next map that's called Exhibit C says Existing Future Land Use Map. And so you're going to see, again, when we talk about future land use, that's, comp that's set forth in the comprehensive plan. And so the Seminole County Comprehensive Plan right now calls this property low-density residential. That's what LDR stands for, and it says that in the legend. And you're going to see that the properties that are to the north have a different future land use designation than that, and also the properties to the east have a different future land use designation. But this property in Seminole County today has a low-density residential future land use designation. And that actually allows up to four units per acre of development. So that's going to – we'll put a bookmark there and talk about that next. Because the next map you're going to see is the proposed future land use map. It says Exhibit C at the top. Also, what we're asking for from the city – the city, again, has a separate comprehensive plan than the county. And the – it just so happens that the city's designation is also low-density residential. 
The difference is in the city, you can only do three and a half units per acre, not four units per acre. So the city's land use designation, low density residential, is provides or allows for a lower density than the county's existing land use for this property. Um, you will also see in the staff report for the comprehensive plan that we did a traffic study. So it talks about, you know, the traffic that will be generated from this project. And that traffic study was reviewed by the city's traffic consultant and approved as not providing too much traffic for the roads to handle in this area. You'll also note that the environmental impacts were of the project were looked at. Again, this map. Sorry, can't grab it. The wetland map was actually done by our environmental consulting team, Biotech, and there is an entire report. And it talks about where the contiguous wetlands are located. It talks about the fact that there are no bald eagles or gopher tortoises or anything out on this property. So there's a, been a complete environmental review, a complete traffic review, a complete water and sewer analysis, analysis. All the public facilities are addressed and a capacity exists. We've also checked with the school system and the school system has capacity. All of that is important for a comprehensive plan amendment because again, once the city finishes its work on it, this application itself will be transmitted to the state of Florida. It used to be called the Department of Community Affairs. Now it's called the Department of Economic Opportunity. Same people, different name. And it gets transmitted to them and they review. So again, the staff has done an excellent job of making sure that all the information that is required to prove that this application is consistent and compatible with the comprehensive plan of the city of Oviedo have been met. And that's the legal standards consistent and compatible with the comprehensive plan. Now, you'll also note, when, because of the wetland system that it exists on the north and the southern, the northeast property line and along the southern property line, that this property cannot be developed to its maximum capacity. Again, we're talking about three and a half units per acre. What our client is proposing is about 50 units per acre. The site plan has not been worked out, but I can tell you that when you look at the analysis that was done, the comprehensive plan by law had to be analyzed for the maximum development, including the wetland areas, but those cannot be developed. So we're not proposing to develop those. So the most we're gonna probably get is 50 to 55 units, probably more around 50. But you're gonna see the number 82 in some of those units I mean, in some of the studies for the comprehensive plan, that's done just because the law requires you to show the impacts at maximum development. But I tell you that because when we talk about the zoning, the zoning application, that the zoning we've applied for, again, going to these maps, Exhibit D for the existing zoning, in Seminole County right now, the zoning for this property is R1A. And R1A allows a 75-foot minimum width lot. That's the zoning today in Seminole County. What we're proposing, again, you're, you're going to see in the maps that I just gave you, it says Exhibit C on the top. It's the proposed zoning map. And we're proposing an R1 zoning, which has actually a wider lot foot, front footage of 80 feet. So again, going back to the comprehensive plan, we're providing a lower density project and we're also providing wider lots in the city of Oviedo than we would be provided in unincorporated Seminole County. So not to keep belaboring this sub subject, but again, you know, we, the project that is proposed, the comprehensive plan, future land use designation of low density of residential, the zoning of R1 are consistent and compatible with the future land use and the zoning designations of the city of Oviedo today. Again, if you look at the future land use map that's proposed, you'll see low density residential for the subject property. All of this is low density residential in this yellow color. So right next door, all these properties are the same land use category that we're asking for. That's what we're talking about when we say consistency and compatibility. And the proposed zoning map, you see R1. You see all in this area, you have, again, not talking about unincorporated Seminole County, but you've got R1 over in this pink shaded area, 
to the west, and you've got R1A to the south, and you've got C2 and other uses down further south. So again, the zoning is consistent and compatible with the surrounding uses of the, of, or the surrounding zonings within the city of Oviedo. Now again, we appreciate staff's hard work on these staff reports. We would like to have them incorporated um, into the record for this hearing. And um, with that, I'll stop talking since I'm sure you're tired of hearing from me. And if you've got any questions, I'll answer them. And if not, I will uh, reserve rebuttal time for the end of the hearing. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant? So the reason you're looking to, for annexation is because of the, the um, utilities that the city can offer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. We did check with Seminole County, and we were told by their public works director there is no water and sewer service available in this area of Seminole County. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Hughes? Thank you. Again, the Oviedo code as it would stand would allow for 82 units, but you're proposing a 52-unit development? Right, and what I mean by that, again, is the future land use designation of low density or residential would allow 3.5 units per acre. So if you do that math, it would be 82 units. But we're proposing about 50 or 55 because, again, we're preserving all the wetlands on that northeast corner and the south property line. So 50 or 55. Correct. Thank you. Mr. Lopez. You mentioned the width was going to be 80 across. What's the depth that you're looking at? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I will have to check on that. Okay. Let me give me one minute because it is set forth in the land development code for the city. Let me just grab my file on that. Yes, 120, and the minimum lot width in the R1 zoning is 80 feet, and then the minimum lot width, I mean, I'm sorry, depth would be 120 feet. And you're going to stick to those standards? We're going to stick to, yes, sir, we are. I just wanted to, the client to nod his head yes before I answered your question. <laughs> are there any other questions of the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. May we hear from staff? Madam Chairperson, if you'd like, I can do both presentations at the same time as well. Okay. Okay. This is a request for the PZA to consider an amendment to the city's official future land use map to change the future land use designation of approximately approximately 38.31 acres from Seminole County low density residential to the city of Oviedo low density <laughs> residential. Property is located on the north side of Artesia Avenue and on the east side of Lake Charm Drive. Comprehensive Plan Policy 1-1.1.4 requires the city to evaluate at a minimum um, criteria when considering a future land use map amendment. And the results of that analysis is found in your staff report. The requested future land use map merely functions as a change of jurisdiction. The current zoning district for the subject property is Seminole County R1A. The property has not been platted. Based on the net developable acreage, the maximum utilization allowed under the proposed low density residential future land use designation with a maximum density of 3.5 dwelling units per acre will result and a development of up to 82 dwelling units. And again, that's based on the maximum. And that's because it's required by um, state that we base the maximum dwelling units when considering a future land use map amendment. The proposed low density residential future land use designation is compatible with the adjacent future land use designations, zoning districts, and existing uses. At its Thursday, April 3rd, 2014 meeting, the Development Review Committee recommended approval of the requested future land use map amendment from Seminole County Low Density Residential to the City of Oviedo Low Density Residential. The City Council will conduct the first reading and transmittal public hearing of Ordinance Number 1587 on May 19th, 2014. The next request, which is a companion request, is a zoning map amendment to change the, the same property 
from Seminole County R1A to the City of Oviedo R1. The proposed R1 zoning district is consistent with the proposed city low density, future, low density residential future land use designation, the surrounding zoning districts and uses. At its Thursday, April 3rd, 2014 meeting, the development review considered the zoning map amendment and recommended approval from Seminole County Residential R1A to the City of Oviedo R1. The City Council will conduct the first reading on Ordinance 1588 on Monday, May 19th, 2014. If you look at page 5 in your report, you will see a comparison of the existing Seminole County zoning district compared to the proposed zoning district. And if you look at R1A in Seminole County, the minimum lot size is 9,000 square feet, and the proposed R1 is 8,500 square feet. If you look at the minimum lot width in Seminole County, it's 75 feet, and in the city, it's 80 feet. The setbacks are going to be similar, um, 25 in the front. Um, for us, it's going to be 25 as well. Um, the setbacks, Seminole County is 7.5, and the city is 8. Um, the rear, Seminole County is 30, and the city is 25. We have also provided for your review, um, which Tara, who's our new planner, Tara Bradley provided it for you. It's provided for you on the dais. And it's a, um, a comparison of the subdivisions that surround the subject property. So you have before you the Preserve at Lake Charm, um, and on it you'll see the average lot size for the Preserve at Lake Charm, which is just um, west of the property. And the lot sizes there um, ranges about 93, 9,375. So the lot width is 75, and the depth is going to be 125. And we've provided for you the plat as well with that so that you can see the lot size of that one. We have also provided Meadow Crest, which is southwest of it. And the lot size, the average lot size for that one is 12,212. The lot width is 90 by 135. And then we have also provided Lake Charm Country Estates, which is due south of the property, of the subject property. That one, the zoning is R1A. The lot size, minimum lot size, average lot size is 11,575. So the lot width is going to be 90 by 128. It is recommended that the PZA recommend adoption of both ordinance number 1587 and 1588. This concludes staff's presentation, and we're available for questions. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Not at this time. Okay, we'll open it up for public hearing. Um, I have one request um, so far. Um, James McCullough, would you come up to the podium, please? State your name and address for the record. Yes, James McCullough, uh, 1068 Whistling Winds Point. I own the property uh, to the east of this planned development. That's why I'm here tonight. My concern with the development is mostly with drainage. The preserve um, at, uh, what is it, the preserve at Lake uh, Charm, I watched that being built. I complained to the county. The county didn't do anything about it. Um, they, they built that whole thing up higher off the grade so it had to drain. The, the direction of the drainage came towards my property. They called it existing drainage. And my argument is there is no existing drainage. There's my property. And what happens is it dumps into a ditch. The ditch goes behind that farmer's field that we're looking at now. The ditch was dug out by the farmer. He maintained it. No one maintains this now. My, behind my property, there is no ditch. It goes from, uh, it was going like from a four-foot ditch to a two-inch and just spreads out. And so what it does, it just floods. Now, I live in a wetland. I'm happy living in the wetland. I don't live in a swamp with standing water. There is a big, big difference. 
My fear is that this, this property will be built up high. All their drainage will go back to a, a retention pond that doesn't really work. Um, the engineers tell you how good the retention ponds are. They don't really do all that. And there's a constant flow and a flood. And then when there's rains, and, and then that's not to mention all the other stuff that's going into the hammock, the pesticides, all the rest of the stuff comes from the lawns. That I'm not even going to get into. My main concern is that there is some drainage plan. I looked at the paperwork from the developer, and it says to be uh, arranged or on a case-by-case -case or something very vague. We need something very specific. The drainage ditch behind my property needs to be dug out to Florida Avenue. It needs to be an active, working, maintained drainage to actually work. Um, it's not. Uh, whether the county has to maintain it or somebody has to maintain it, uh, it has to be maintained. It was bad enough when this other development came in and they put a 36-inch 36, 36 pipe going under the ground. And when I saw them doing it, I said, what's this? And well, I said, why aren't you draining towards Lake Jessup, the other side? And his comment to me was, well, we don't want to overload their drainage system on that side. But it's okay to come to my side and drain it this way and just dump on your property, which I have a problem with. Um, that's one thing. This is another development. My only concern, I don't, I don't, the development doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the drainage and what's going to happen. And everybody's assumption that wetland is some kind of swamp. It's not. You know, it's the hammock area where water goes in there, it stands for a little bit and it goes in. That's where we get our drinking water from, the aquifer and everything. So it's, it's not that. And what I'm afraid of is water to be dumped to the point where it comes across my property and then I'm sitting in an area where there's standing water all the time, which is unacceptable. Not gonna, I'm not going gonna, I'm not gonna to go with that. Uh, so basically the other part of it is the, uh, the preserve at Lake Charm when they were building it, um, the thing to me is an eyesore. It looks like Metro West. It doesn't look like anything in the Black Hammock. It doesn't look like it belongs in that area. Now down on Florida, the other development according to Leon in Florida, that's an Oviedo. That looks good. It matches the environment. It has lighting that's actually appropriate for the area. This other place has beehive lighting like it's in the middle of Metro West. It's disturbing and it's light pollution. And why no one's has addressed that, I don't know. But I complain about it, but uh, when I was complaining about it, it was being transferred to you guys. So that was pretty much it for that. Same thing with the drainage. So basically that's my concern. And I really want to see um, a plan to have the proper drainage put in when this thing is built. Thank you. Thank you. The next request is from Roberta Geyer. Did I say that correctly? Geyer. Geyer. Yes. Please state your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Roberto Geyer, 2220 Orange Street in the Black Hammock. Uh, I look at this, uh, at this plan and overall the way the city of Oviedo and the county are planning the development of the area. It looks like a never-ending. I don't know how you run the city as a business if you need more and more and more and more and more and more and more to achieve something. But anyhow, in this case, it looks like you want to incorporate into the city. That way the county doesn't have the responsibility. You take the responsibility. As the gentleman that just uh, spoke, and from a report that uh, you supporting so that invent inventory and analysis, zoning map amendment ordinance and so on that the city did. I don't see any study outside the property. I don't see any mention of anything outside the property like the gentleman's property. How can you think about the development on a specific property without thinking the consequences that could be on the adjacent properties or down the road? That's consequential damages if you flood the property next door and you are responsible for it and you'll pay the damages. And I bet that a lot of people that live around there and they're very dissatisfied with what's going on and how it's, got been, how it's been going on for quite some time. At the same time, I live in the Black Amok and I live there because I like it. I don't live there because I'm planning to become a millionaire by selling my property down the road. Uh, I like it because it's rural, because it's uh, 
sort of uh, the Amazons in Seminole County is the breeding place where you've got still uh, wild alive, natural wilderness and so on. But going back to the point, you don't have any studies about the impact on the adjacent properties, on the surroundings. And that, to me, is a superficial way of working. All the drainage that, that goes out from this property will go down to, like the gentleman just said, into a little creek, into a little something, which cannot support the size of the development. If you talk about doing retention ponds, I look around at the retention ponds, and you have to consider the amount of land that you are going to be covering. You've got 38.31 acres. You're going to cover it up, what, 60%? So basically, it's like putting a roof on the entire 60% of the land. The water is going to flush out. Where is it going to go? That's one of the considerations. You cannot just say, oh, we're going to build a retention pond. When the retention pond is full and it rains, the water is just going to flow out. There's no, there's no meaning for a retention pond. So you need to evaluate, again, those retention ponds and the functionality of them. It's useless to have a little plunge, just a little lake. Then you got, again, all the amounts of water that you have on your statistics here, the use per household, per dwelling. And you got a lake charm on the other side, which is on septic tanks. And that water is already flowing down to the adjacent properties on the north side. Uh, this new development, they don't have, you have to provide the sewers. And I'm wondering, how come that this part, which is going to be within the city of Oviedo, is going to have supposedly sewers and not the other side? What, make that, uh, what makes you decide to which way to build on one side or on the other? Is there anyone who can give me an answer on that? Any answer? That's not something we can answer at this time. We just you can need answer you to at this time. But anyhow, it's a concern because on the west side, you've got septics, which the water is going to flow down to the other properties. On the east side, it's going to be still in the, within the city of Oviedo. Is it going to be forcefully done with the sept I mean, is it going to be done with septics, or is it going to be an obligation to have sewer system that is provided by the city of Oviedo? So that's, again, is another consideration in protecting the properties around uh, the surrounding area. Uh, wetlands and so on, I know there's mitigation. There's lots of ways you can go around it. They promise not to, you know, not to build on the wetlands. It would be also advisable for them not to do and to keep as much as uh, possible green spaces because if you're building homes, for people just to go and stick in the bed and watch TV and go out and in and out. I don't know. I don't call it a residential anymore. I call it a sort of barracks. Uh, another thing is the traffic that this development is going to generate. By the numbers, uh, you put there's going to be 268 people. Where's the traffic going to go? For this particular one, this particular development. And then, as we can see from past history, you keep on annexing more and more and more and more properties. That will build up in the future, and where is going to go? Because when we discussed the, the development on De Leon and Florida <clears throat> 434, we expressed our concern about traffic, the intersection, and so on, and nobody listens. And this is one of the developments. There's two more developments Coming, up, coming along on the east side. And there's going to be probably a bunch more. So you have to consider that part as well as your planning. Not just one development now, and then three months later, we'll think about another one, another one. You need to look forward and do some calculations of all the, based on the statistics, based on the traffic that you have now, and, and the expansions that you want to have. So make sure you protect the people around it. You protect the properties around it. You do the proper calculations in the traffic, water, and everything else. That is basically what I'm just uh, <clears throat> asking for. 
So you, you'll have a development that is uh, not just consistent with the number of dwellings per property, but with an overall development that's functional, makes sense, and it's going to be safe because you have fire, city, I mean, um, utilities, you're going to have uh, policing and all that stuff that has to be going, considered and not just superficially. Thank you. Thank you. The last request I have is from Don Peterson. State your name and address for the record, Mr. Peterson. Sure. You don't look anything like Dominic. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yes, and it is. Uh, Don Peterson, 3585 Canal Street, Oviedo, Black Hammock, actually. Uh, we have a number of concerns, even though this piece of property is not in the Black Hammock. It not only abuts Black Hammock, but it also abuts the rural boundary which we've been concerned about since 1995. Uh, does anybody live in uh, the preserve at Lake Charm? That would be anybody on that road? No, you're not going to tell me where you live. I get it. <laughs> well, anyway. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any idea what's going on over there? That the roads are buckling, sidewalks are caving in, the houses are cracking and splitting in, almost in half in the slab? Nobody's are you you're referring to the preserve at Lake Charm? That's correct. Okay. So are you aware of that? Anybody aware of that? Okay. No. That's interesting. But anyway, uh, that whole piece of property was all one property at one time. It's all artesian fields. And I'm going to tell you what happened over there at uh, the preserve at Lake Charm is when they capped all those wells, that was well and good. But when they dug the retention pond, guess what happened? The pressure from all the, all, our, from all the artesians wound up in their retention pond. So right now, it constantly, whether there's any rain for months or not, it produces five gallons a minute coming out of there. This property is probably going to do the same thing. I don't know. We can defer to Charlie. The people that live on whispering wind or whatever it is behind this property, in a two-inch rain, they flood. The people that live at, I think it's 1440 Florida Avenue, flood. Everybody in that whole area floods. When this property gets raised probably four or five feet, it's only going to get worse. And uh, I think, I don't like what they used to call putting the cart before the horse. In other words, there's a lot of unanswered questions right now, but it's coming to you for approval right now. We don't know. We just got told, and I didn't see her map, but uh, the northeast section of the properties has wetlands. Well, the truth of the matter is the whole eastern side and a corner of the northeast does, as well as the southeast. And I would think that uh, we need a clarification on how much of that's going to be destroyed. I understand part of it's going to be preserved, but I didn't get the picture that all of it was going to be preserved. Uh, and even if they dig a retention pond there, and we know there's muck in the center of that, quite a bit of muck in the center of that uh, parcel, uh, where is the extra water going to go? And I don't think that question is answered yet. I'm not sure it can be answered. Uh, in lieu of what I just told you was happening across the street. Uh, so we would like to see, because all the water eventually gets into the black hammock, how, whatever means uh, it is, whether it goes down the creek that runs down the southern border of this piece of property through everybody's backyard, comes out of Canal in Florida, goes down Canal Street to Howard Street, takes a left and goes out at Crosscut Canal. That's one method. The other would be to direct it down Lake Charm, which would require a huge ditch, and it would go wind up going under the ground at Florida Avenue, connecting with the uh, creek that proceeds from Florida Avenue to Howard, takes a right and winds up at Crosscut Canal. Same deal. It's a lot of water, and if you start putting concrete, roads, rooftops, and everything else on property, the water doesn't seep 
into the ground, it runs off. And we already know from past experience and, and the years of uh, nobody developing that already that that ground doesn't perk very well. So what's going to have to happen is it's going to be like across the street at Observer Lake Charn. It's going to have to be four to five feet elevated off the road. Uh, that being said, um, and maybe Mr. Madden can fill us in, uh, I, we are interested in where the water is going to go, how it's going to be controlled, and we've heard time and time again that all the water that falls on that property will be retained on that property, but we've never seen that be able to happen. So some of that, would, if we could be enlightened, it would be great. Uh, so we're talking about the wetlands destruction. We're talking about the muck and what happens when they dig a retention pond. We just talked about what happens across the street already. And certainly the homeowners that are going to buy these homes from Taylor Morrison aren't going to want to have the same issues that they have at the preserve. Um, the other thing I'd like to talk about is... Since on the south side of Panther Street, formerly Artesia, you have two subdivisions, each more than 10,000 square foot lot size. The lots are bigger, they're wider, and like I said, have more square feet. Uh, there's this thing called transition. Anybody familiar with that term? No? Wow. Anyway, transition is supposed to occur outside the rural boundary not inside it. So we think that this would be a great opportunity to show the world what transition is by instead of going with 8,500 square foot lot sizes, that you might consider uh, an approval of something like R1A, 10,000, or what they have across the street to the south side, R1AA, 12,000 square feet. And that would, of course, it would hurt Taylor Morrison because he couldn't stick as many houses in there. But um, it would help the neighborhood. It would help all of the Black Hammock. It would certainly help Lake Jessup if um, there wasn't quite as dense population there. Uh, let's see. I think that covers it for the moment. And I would sure like to hear somebody uh, answer those questions I just put forth. And I think now is the time to do it because we don't want to put the donkey before the horse. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. That's all the written requests I have. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to the board at this time? Can you come to the podium, please? State your name and address for the record. My name is Jennifer French. I live in the community that he was just discussing, um, Lake Turn Country Estates. I'm part of the HOA board. Um, I'm kind of ill-prepared tonight because I was, this meeting kind of popped up, the sign popped up in the corner, so I didn't know in a couple of days. Um, my biggest issues with this community, I'm hearing about 50, 55 homes meaning if we double that for two cars per household, I'm looking at 100, 110 cars coming in and out of that two-lane street, either on Panther or on Lake Charm. That's a big issue for me. There is, it's a residential street. Um, I drive it every day. I cannot fathom having an extra 120 cars leaving between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, my other issue is we just went through Seminole County School Board and rezoning this. For those of you who do not, I mean, if you, if you guys all have children, that's great, but we had to fight to keep our children where they're currently at. It was a battle. Um, Seminole County wanted to rezone everything so it's all fair. Adding an extra 60 houses will now make Lawton, where my children go, expand again. Looking at several years down the road, having to do this process again. And it was brutal. It was not kind. We had homeowners upset. We, had, we, we bought for a purpose in that neighborhood. And we're over there now having to fight to keep it that way. So I, the water issue, I totally understand. But my issues are the construction and getting everybody in and out on that two-lane street at 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning and then school zone. Um, you know, we just, let's not burst what we just fixed and, you know, we got Lawton down to a, a manageable size 
and then now we're adding more to it almost immediately. I mean, what I would say to you guys is, you know, just because we can doesn't mean we should. We shouldn't, you know, just because it's there and we, we can take it doesn't mean we should take the land and make it ours. I, I'm not really interested, and I, I like living out there. I like having the cows, looking at the cows. I like seeing the wild turkeys. I like seeing the deer on occasion. Um, adding that kind of homes is going to ruin that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. There, um, since this is a quasi-judicial hearing, we're entitled to rebuttal after public comment. Um, do you want us to do that now, or do you have other questions for staff before we do that? I have other questions for staff before we do that. Thank you. Ms. Pierre, um, I do have a question, um, a couple of them, in fact. Mr. Peterson brought up the transition area with the Seminole, uh, with the rural boundary um, that's been declared by Seminole County. Can you tell us a little bit about the transition to that boundary? Yes, um, we had what's called a joint planning interlocal agreement with Seminole County. And in that JPA, it did have a transition area um, for properties along the rural boundary. The JPA no longer exists today, um, so there are no requirements for um, a transition area within the city of Oviedo. Um, it doesn't exist anymore. Okay. We've heard a lot about drainage issues, and my understanding is the only thing that we can consider tonight is the entitlement, um, the property owner's entitlement to the zoning and the comp plan amendment. Yes, Madam Chairman. Um, I've heard a lot of issues tonight, and a lot of them, I appreciate the issues because they are, they are concerns. And um, at this point, there are two applications before you tonight, and the first application is the Comprehensive Plan Amendment. The Comprehensive Plan Amendment does not get into the details of drainage. Um, it doesn't get into the site planning type issues. It's whether or not the future land use that is being requested tonight is something that is consistent with what's surrounding it. And um, as you will see in the staff memo, we have staff has recommended approval of it because we feel that it's consistent. Um, if you look to your, um, if you look at your maps that's provided for you in your staff report, you'll see the future land use designations of properties surrounding it. If you look at page 14, you'll see to the south, you have low density residential. To the west, you also have low density residential. Um, to the east, to the southeast, you have low density residential, but you also have um, what is called rural for um, the county. So in those areas that are in the city of Oviedo, low density residential is what is surrounding the rural area. And even if you look at the preserve at Black Hammock, you'll see going from Black Hammock all the way down, it's all low density residential um, for Oviedo. So what we're looking at tonight is whether or not the requested future land use is consistent with what's in Oviedo and surrounding um, unincorporated if it's compatible to it. And we're telling you tonight that it is, and we are recommending approval. Now, when you look at the zoning, the zoning, again, is, does not get into those details. What you are to consider with the zoning is whether or not the requested zoning is consistent with the future land use designation. That's one. And whether or not the, con the requested zoning is compatible with what's surrounding it and whether or not that zoning is the most appropriate for under the future land use designation of low density residential. And um, if you look at your reports, and even if you look at the, um, what Tara provided for you tonight, which would be the subdivisions that are surrounding it, 
you'll see that you have the Preserve It Lake Charm that has the R1 zoning district. And the lot size is there. The average is 9,375. And that's, th those, the Preserve It Lake Charm is bordering that rural boundary. It's near that rural boundary, just as this particular um, development is as well. They have the R1 zoning, but their lot size is, as instead of 8,500, it's 9,375. Um, Meadowcrest, which is not near the rural boundary, their lot size is 12,212. And then you have Lake Charm Country Estates. Um, those two, Meadowcrest and Lake Charm Country Estates, the zonings for them um, is R1A. You also have a table which is, um, Madam Chairman, requested. You have that zoning table in front of you as well. And it has a list of zoning districts that um, is also considered compatible with the low density residential future land use designation. So you have that before you tonight as well. Um, but the R1 is compatible with what's there. Um, it is consistent with the future land use designation and we are recommending approval of it. We will get into the details such as drainage, um, roads. We will get into those details during the preliminary subdivision plan stage, which you will see the PSP, the preliminary subdivision plan. Um, it is not here before you tonight. They have not gotten into that level of detail. They have not submitted anything to the city um, with that level of detail. But all those issues will be addressed at that point. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff at this time? Okay. Ms. Avery Smith, do you want to come back? Madam Chairman. And thank you, Ms. Pierre, very much. That was an excellent summary of everything. And I also want to thank the residents who came out tonight. They raised valid concerns, and we're not dismissing them. And I would like to take a few minutes to respond to them so they know that we actually heard what they said. Um, again, going back to the land use, and we're, I'm going to start big and go smaller to more detail. Um, again, the, the future land use designation of this property today in Seminole County is low density residential. It's not rural. It's not there is no JPA, again, that's expired. There is no transition boundary or requirement that is on the books in the law right now. And so, again, we're, go we're going low-density residential to low-density residential when it comes to the comprehensive plan amendment application. Same thing with the zoning. The zoning in unincorporated Seminole County right now is R1A. We're asking for R1. Those are, you know, hand-in-hand, -hand, apples and apples comparisons. Um, when we talk about the density of the project, if you look at the map for the wetlands, these are wetland areas that are going to be preserved, not impacted. And that, that's why they're marked out in this blue on this, on this plan in this area. And so those will not, that will reduce, those, this acreage between this property and this property, property is about 15 acres. So at least 15 of these 38 acres will not be developed. They're going to be set aside. And so, again, to address their concerns about the density and drainage, certainly that's going to limit the density and provide plenty of wetland area to provide drainage. And I'm going to let Mr. Madden come up and talk about drainage here in a minute. Um, I I'm, had I, I'm sorry. I have a question about that map you were just showing us with the wetlands. Mm -hmm. What is that section in blue that has the red cross hatch on it? This is going to be an area of the wetland. And let me, let me confirm this before I tell you. But the area that's hatched is pasture, but it's already been impacted. So that's an, that's an area that denotes impacted wetland. These wetlands here and these wetlands along the southern boundary have not been impacted and will not be impacted. So is that going to be preserved as as wetlands or not? Oh, the, pat it, the wetland has already been impacted there. That's why it's shown as crosshatched. Okay. That area has been impacted mm -hmm. by previous activities on the site. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, there was a mention, too, about, you know, having a, a project that is of quality for the city of Oviedo. And I don't know how much you know about Taylor Morrison, but they do build quality homes, and the average price of the homes out here will be in the high 400s. And so you're not talking about a low income or low quality develop. You're, you're talking about a high quality value community to bring tax base to the city of Oviedo. Um, Ms. Pierre was correct in that we are only on the comp plan amendment and zoning uh, approval process right now. There's a lot of work to be done on things like drainage and water and sewer infrastructure on that kind of thing. We did address traffic in the comprehensive plan amendment uh, application. There is a staff report that was done by a professional traffic engineer and was reviewed by the city's traffic engineer. As we said before, that was based on the 82 units, which is more than we intend to build, but it shows you there is roadway capacity out there for traffic. We also checked with the Seminole County School Board. There is plenty of school capacity in Seminole County um, for the children who will live on this property. Um, I just want to make sure I hit all of the highlights. I'm going to let Charlie talk because he is a civil engineer and I'm not. I'm going to let him talk about the drainage specifically, but I am a lawyer, so I will tell you that the law requires the St. John's River Water Management District is a state agency that has jurisdiction over the wetlands and stormwater in the city of Oviedo as well as surrounding uh, Seminole County. And their requirement by law is that pre-development runoff has to equal post-development runoff, meaning the site cannot drain more water off after it's developed than it drains off today. And so I'm going to let Charlie get into that. But that's what the law requires. We, this project will get St. John's River Water Management District permit approval, as well as City of, of Oviedo construction plan and stormwater, all of that, those good approvals at the construction plan level that we are not to today. So with that being said, I'm going to let Charlie come up and answer some specific drainage um, questions, if you have any, and some of the, address some of the comments raised by the neighbors. Can you state your name and address for the record? Sure. My name is Charlie Madden. I'm with Madden, Moorhead, and Glunt, 431 East Ratio Avenue, Maitland. Here are also representing Taylor Morrison Homes. Um, it, it is accurate that at, at this point, obviously, we're, we're dealing with the comp plan and the zoning. Um, we will be, when we get, when we get down to the Fulmer subdivision plan stage, we will, we will be required to dive into the the drainage issues, and we hear the concerns that the neighbors have brought up. Um, we are indeed held to a very strict drainage standard by both the city of Oviedo. You have a very qualified staff here to review our drainage calculations, as certainly does the state agency, St. John's River Water Management District. So we'll be held and looked and scrutinized very closely as we analyze the drainage. Today, the site does drain into the wetlands that are along the south and in that northeast area there. Um, you know, that's where the water is going today. And when we develop this property and implement retention ponds throughout the project, the water will continue to go. Those ponds will pop off, if you will, when they reach a certain elevation. That's kind of how retention ponds work. And they will um, discharge into those same wetlands in the same directions that they're currently going today. So, of course, we don't have the ponds designed or we're not at that point yet, but, you know, that's kind of how conceptually it works at this point. And that's what we'll be reviewing when we prepare the preliminary subdivision plan. Any questions? Are there any questions of the applicant? Thank you. Okay, we've heard from everyone on this. What's the board's pleasure? We have before us ordinance number 1587, the comp I'll plan. Make, I'll make a motion to approve both ordinance 1587 and 1588. We need to do them separately. Okay. And I make a motion to approve ordinance 1587, comprehensive plan amendment. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Mr. Pollock. Is there any discussion? Um, I think we've heard 
everyone tonight. We've heard the concerns um, of the neighbors around there. And I certainly hope that um, the applicant will address those concerns as we go forward. Um, I'm looking at the information regarding the transportation study, and I have to tell you, driving through that area every day, I'd like to invite the traffic consultant out there in the morning to try and get out onto the roadway. We keep having developments in this general area come before us, and the traffic consultants all say the same thing, that it's compatible and there's enough service left on the roads, but it's just not happening in real life. So I, I do have concerns about that aspect of it. Um, if there's no more discussion, we have before us the motion to approve the comp plan amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next ordinance before us is 1588, the zoning map amendment. Do we have a motion on that one? I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 1588, Zoning Map Amendment. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Hughes, is there any discussion? Is R1 the zoning that that would that is definitely compatible with this area? Um, with you know, given the lot sizes and the uh, and the surrounding neighborhoods. Mr. Pollock, who are you directing that question the, to? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm directing it to to the the board just to you know to just think about um, before we um, before we vote on the R1. Um, there's an R1A, um, which is a, a slightly larger uh, lot size um, that. You know, I think, you know, given the, the surrounding areas, um, given their lot sizes, I think that, you know, an R1A um, would also be compatible um, with this area. Okay. Um, I tend to agree with you on that. I, I'm very concerned about the um, compatibility here and um, – not just in these neighborhoods in Oviedo, but the surrounding area, I don't see that R1 is compatible with it. I would think it, it would need to be at a minimum of R1A um, and possibly even the R1AA. When we look at the um, Lake Charm Estates, that's got a minimum lot size of 90 feet, which would even though it's rated R1A, it's zoned R1A, um, it has an R1AA minimum width, as does Meadowcrest. And when you look at the property on the other sides of it that's in Seminole County, certainly those are much larger lots still. So I don't agree that the R1, I don't believe that's compatible with the surrounding area, and I don't think that's the most appropriate. Any other discussion? I okay. would agree. I think, it, I think it needs to be R1A, at least, at this point. At least I, it, it fits more into the structure of the area, zoning-wise. Ms. Hughes? I, I would agree. I think the, the applicant has already said that they're looking at a minimum of they're looking at 120 by 80, so they're already talking about a 9,600 square foot lot, not an 8,500. So they're they're actually in the middle of those two anyway. So it's not as significant of a change as you would think if they're if they're looking at building 9,600 minimum. Um, so I think the 1A is more more appropriate. Okay. Um, the motion we have before us is to approve the request at the R1. I'll make an amendment to it if we can for R1A. Um. Why don't we why don't we vote on okay. that Let's motion? Vote on that one and and if then it's um, voted down, then we can do it again. Okay. Um, let's do that so that we have a clean record here. Mm -hmm. um, those in favor of the motion before us to approve it with an R one designation say aye. Those opposed, nay. 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 Okay. Motion fails. Okay. 
Now, do we have another motion? M Madam Chair, I would, I would like to make a motion um, to amend um, the uh, ordinance. We don't have to. Well, well, I'm sorry, not amending. Um, to I guess to to change um, the zoning map amendment to R1A. I, I believe that's how. Yeah, that's right. Was so we, um, if I understand it, so we would be recommending approval to the city council on an R1A 1A. designation instead of the R1. That's correct. That's your motion. Yes. Okay. Do we have a second, second on that, it. Mr. Lopez? Thank you. Is there any more discussion or any discussion on this motion? Okay, I, I think that's a more appropriate zoning designation considering the surrounding um, areas here. Um, if there's no further discussion, we'll call the vote on that. Madam Chair, let me just make sure I'm understanding. Okay, so the, the request for the R1 has been voted down. Correct. And so now the board is making a new recommendation for... A different zoning district. Yes, yes. Okay. R one A. I'm but sorry, we but we're not taking any more comments at this time. There's no application before this board about R one A. The application is for R one. And so the vote has been to recommend denial of that. We we are I'm sorry, can you Please take your seat at this time. Thank you. We are currently making a recommendation. We are currently making a recommendation to City Council um, for this, for the land use on this, and I believe we can make a recommendation for whatever land use we, you know, we deem appropriate. Madam Chair, Ms. Um, Pierre. Mr. Pollock is correct. Um, with zonings, as there are a number of zoning of zoning classifications, zoning districts that's consistent with the low density residential future land use designation. You are correct in that you can make a recommendation for a different zoning district. Um, you all have voted down the zoning district of R1. And so as long as the zoning district that you were making a recommendation for is consistent with the future land use designation of low density residential, you can recommend a different zoning district, and it will carry forward to the city council. And R, R1A is consistent with low de density residential, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing them, we'll call the vote on the motion to recommend um, approval to the City Council on an R1A zoning um, classification. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Both the um, comp plan amendment and the zoning map amendment will first be considered by City Council May 19th. Is that correct, Ms. Pierre? That is correct, May 19th. At 6.30. Um, at 6.30 in these chambers. The next item on our agenda are discussion items. Um, I have none listed. Does anyone have anything that the board needs to discuss at this time? Okay. So our, the next item are future meeting dates. We have Tuesday, May 13th. Tuesday, May 27th, and Tuesday, June 10th is our regular meetings. Do we know if we have items for those meetings at this time? You will have, for your next meeting, you will have an item, which will be, which will be the flags, the land development code amendments that we're going tonight will be at the next meeting. The flags that never <laughs> again. They keep flying. Just get rid of it now. It's like a boomerang that <laughs> just keeps coming back. Okay. Is there anything else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>